Hypo Hippo. I can't pronounce that company right. Oh my goodness. Lads, if you're listening to this, please don't kill me. Please don't hate me for this. Hypo Hyper. Okay, I'm gonna, you're gonna have to teach me how to say it. Hyper. Hyper Hippo. Hyper Hippo. Hyper Hippo. You got it. <laughs> Hello, my name is Ariel, and you're listening to Never Have I Ever, a podcast about experiences I never had. Welcome to episode 3 of this podcast series. So if you're just joining us, feel free to subscribe as new episodes come out each week. This is part 2 of the Club Penguin case study as I'm here to tell you that never have I ever made a gaming blog. Gaming blogs, a blog dedicated to video games. This could range between covering every single game in existence or just one or two. When I was young, I was on this social media website called Multiply. For those who are unaware, it's basically Facebook back in the early 2000s like Friendster or MySpace. And in there, we joined groups. There were a few Club Penguin groups, but I joined the one with the most members. And we shared tips on completing PSA missions or events. But after moving to Australia and returning to playing Club Penguin back in 2012, Multiply was gone. But there has been a rise of Club Penguin blogs and the amount of them that you can find on the internet just shocks me. Just search on Google, where can I meet Captain Rockhopper or any other mascot and you'll come up with the same results with the same title on screen. And not gonna lie, why aren't I surprised? The same thing happens in journalism, right? Where you read the same headline over and over when something significant occurs. But as someone who wants to stand out and be different, how can one write a gaming blog but also be unique? So joining me is Maggie Tran. But you may also know her, or should I say him, as Tech70! As they share their experiences telling me how it was like to run their gaming blog. So before we start, I just have to ask, you're a girl? That's right, Ariel. I am a girl. For the past 10, almost 11 years, all my Penguin Pals have known me as a boy. So I originally came on Club Penguin as my actual gender, a girl. But then people started to assume that I was a boy and it just got all too much. I remember this one day I was waddling around Club Penguin and I think it was during the fall fair of 2010. I was uh, making a new friend with somebody and just after they accepted my friend request and we got on each other's friend lists, they asked me if I was a boy and I didn't want to lose this friend. I was afraid of uh, their judgment. So I just, I was like, yep, I am a boy, even though we all know that that's not true now. And I guess it's because my name, Tech 70, implies that I'm a boy. And also uh, the kind of clothes that I wear, the blue hoodie, the blue cap. It, But actually, I am a tomboy. I'm, I'm a girl, but I'm a tomboy. I like trains. I like um, all these things that are considered for boys. So that's why I dressed up my penguin the way it is, but I still identify as a girl. You know one of those internet rules? There are no girls on the internet? But then again, why should girls wear pink all the time? I mean, sure, I wear pink in Club Penguin, but that's because that's my favorite color. Why does the color, color blue stop you from being identified as a girl on video games, you know? But it's really, really shocking to know that you're a girl because I didn't know. I thought you were a dude as well. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the first time I revealed to anybody in the Club Penguin community that I was a girl was when I visited Kelowna, BC, Canada in 2018. Of course, if I'm going there as a human, people are going to know I'm a girl. 
so that was the first time anybody ever knew that I was a girl. And it's only until now that I'm letting the rest of the Club Penguin community know that I am a girl. It's, uh, we do need some more female representation in the gaming industry. And so I just want to put that out there. I think it's great what Bambaloo slash Emma is doing. She is part of this organization where they promote females in the gaming industry. So um, I think that's so awesome. Yeah, I would like to see more females and girls in the gaming industry as well, both as content creators or game creators. Because here's the thing about like female gamers, especially now, unfortunately, we're now being perceived as Twitch thoughts. And I know there are a few who aren't, you know, using their body to get views on Twitch. Yeah, it's kind of sad now how in order to like people to see you as a girl now, you have to like dress up as a girl. And if you want to do the extreme, expose your body. When in reality, I just wish it was just like we could just dress up whatever we want and not be judged as dudes or be scrutinized for what we wear, you know? Yeah, that's the problem with gender roles. But I still wear the blue cap. I still wear the blue hoodie, because that is my penguin. I want to dress up my penguin as this blue penguin who wears casual clothes. I don't like the color pink. I don't like wearing girly clothes. So that's that's my penguin, right? We can dress our penguin the freedom that we can express in Club Penguin. We can be anybody who we want to be. And that's exactly what I did with my penguin. I just wish that I had the tenacity and the confidence during that day at the fall fair in 2010, that I could tell that new friend that, yes, I am actually a girl, not a boy. And unfortunately, since that day, people have known me as a boy. And the more time passed, the more that I regretted that decision. But now it's time to let people know. So, ta-da! You're a girl. I mean, you should be proud to be a girl. Or your or whatever specific gender, who anyone listening to this, be proud on who you are. If you don't feel like coming out, then if you're not ready yet, you wait till your time is right. But I can't believe it took you like eleven years to finally reveal to us that you're a girl. And good on you. Huge shocker for everyone, especially in that group chat that we were in. And yeah, huge shocker basically. <laughs> Yeah, honestly, I've kept my human self a secret, like super secret for the past almost 11 years. I, 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 I think my hesitation with letting people know more about me was that I was a girl and I just didn't want to come as such a shocker to people. But I just wanted to know my penguin pals a little bit more, but I just wanted to be more truthful to myself and to others. So. Uh, that's why I'm letting people know that, yes, Tech 70 is a girl, and I've been a girl for all my life. I'm a she, her, hers. One thing I know about you, aside from being female and playing Club Penguin for a long time, and other hyper, hyper hippo games, for those who are just joining us, Hypo Hippo is uh, Rocket Snails, a.k.a. Lance Preeves Gaming Company, founder of Club Penguin. He made his own gaming company and made other games as an independent publisher. You write gaming blogs. Is that correct? Yes, I used to have two blogs. One of them was about all things Club Penguin, and the other was about all things Hyper Hippo and other projects from Rocket Snail slash Lance Preeb. So why did you decide to make a gaming blog? Honestly, it was because of all the time that I've spent on Twitter. I considered my blog as a long form tweet. I had a lot to share on my mind about memes or just interesting stuff that was on my mind about Club Penguin. And of course, Twitter limits characters, right? We all know that. So that's why I created the blog, just so I could have an unlimited space where I could share whatever was on my mind. I didn't write news and updates like most Club Penguin bloggers. I knew that if I did, people wouldn't really know me that well because almost everybody writes that kind of stuff and I wouldn't be able to stand out. Plus, I was never interested in writing about the news anyway. Like so many other bloggers do an excellent job at that and I don't think I could keep up with all the news that was happening in Club Penguin all the time. 
So I started writing a lot of opinion posts and special guides. And these are not typical guides like, oh, how to win Karjitsu Fire. I wrote stuff like how to have a successful igloo party with many visitors, how to become a stamp expert, because I've actually earned every single stamp that Club Penguin has ever released. So just like these unique posts that um, I could contribute to the community. I mean, according to Athena, like almost everyone has a blog. Like if you want to be Club Penguin famous, so to speak, make a blog. But when I remember when I was playing Club Penguin, when by the time I was, when I moved to Australia, so I think this was like 2011, 2012, when I came back to playing the game, I've noticed like there would be a bunch of blogs with like the same type of content and everything. When you search, oh yeah, where is the new pin? Or where to find Captain Rockhopper? And you like tracker, 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 or pin location, pin location, pin location. And it's just like the same thing on your search results. So I think it's really cool that you're trying to stand out in the community. Did people recognize you for your work doing so though? That is the question. Yes, a few people have told me that, wow, your content is so different from other bloggers' content. And they were able to share their opinions and thoughts on the post. Because newsy kind of content isn't as discussion-based as the kind of content that I like to write. So where did blogging take you? Like, where did writing Club Penguin blogs take you? I'd say that the blogging experience I had over time with Club Penguin and the Hyper Hippo led me to my own professional blog and writing career. So right now, I'm actually running a business where I write about travel and mental health content, and I mix the two together into one blog. So I have OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder, and social anxiety, and a lot of other mental health problems, but I also like to travel. So I was able to use the experience and practice from the WordPress content management system from my Club Penguin and Hyper Hippo blog. Once I came over to start this professional business, then I came in with some know-how already, and that's what I've been doing ever since, actually. I'm so busy lately because of this new writing career and business that I've been running. Ah, so that's why you kind of stopped writing your hypo-hippo blog and box creator stuff. Yeah, I, uh, I've been busy with my own endeavors, but I always come back to the Club Penguin and Box Critters community once in a while to see what's up. And it's also so nostalgic just to pop up on Twitter and see what people are talking about. And it's, uh, I still like seeing that there's a lot of my close friends still on. So previously, I interviewed Athena and she, along with a few other former Club Penguin bloggers, told me that there was drama within the blogging community. So some of them say, oh yeah, they started the drama. Some said they witnessed it. Some told me some stories. Some started accusing people left and right, especially after, like before Club Penguin Island came out. The first thing I want to ask is, did you know any of this? I was aware of the drama that was happening in the Twitter community, but the blogging community, not so much. Were you involved in any of the drama? I stood back. I stood away from it. I could see it happening. And I think that's one of the reasons why I remained on a hiatus from the Twitter community during those years, because there was so much drama happening on Twitter. And I I didn't need to be a part of that drama. So I just saw it happening, but I didn't actually participate in it. I don't like instigating conflicts. It's okay to have an opinion and to share that opinion online, but uh, people can get defensive sometimes and take that as more of a personal attack than just an opinion that we'd like to contribute to the discussion. So I, um, yeah, I think that was also one of the other reasons why I was kind of quiet during that period of time. Did you think you ever taught yourself us? Club Penguin or Hypo Hippo or Box Critter Famous because of your blog? Or did you just think, oh, I'm just someone who has a blog and I'm just having fun with it and I just want to see where it goes? I was never aspiring to be famous. And I don't know, maybe the main reason I became famous was just because I 
I'm unrespectful. I I don't like drama, so I never want to start anything like that. And I'm just kind to everybody and participate in all these community events and stuff. I think people just knew me as a cool dude. Like I I get that a lot. And so like I'm I'm sure the blog is a part of it, but I think it's more of just my character and um, all the participation that I've done in the community for all those years. I mean, you technically are a cool dude. I mean, for starters, Rocket Steel gave you an item to distribute in box graders for Pete's sakes. So that's one, th- that's something, you know? <laughs> yeah, I was kind of surprised when uh, I got that offer and was like, okay, let's do it. <laughs> So out of everything you wrote in your entire lifetime in the gaming community, in the Club Penguin, Hyper Hippo, all that, what is your favorite blog post and why? I wrote three blog posts on my Club Penguin blog about my real life trip to Kelowna, Canada, uh, meeting Chris Glidden slash Polo Field in a restaurant, as well as Lance Preve and the Hyper Hippo team in their headquarters in downtown Kelowna. And as a bonus, Polo Field sneaked in a tour with his, um, I think she's his spouse now, uh, his spouse, his romantic partner, Emma slash Bambaloo. We all know her as the Antarctic. Anyway, she took me on a tour of the Okanagan Center for Innovation, which is an office space building that uh, Billy Bob slash Wayne Merrifield started a few years ago. So she took me on a tour through the floors to see Wayne Merrifield's fresh grade office. And I also ran into a few other former Club Penguin employees. Probably the most notable one was Dia Mama slash Deanna. And I also met Bad Stink and one other Penguin employee. I don't remember her name right now, but it was just cool that I got an extra experience to meet Emma and these other Club Penguin folks, and I didn't even plan it. So that was so awesome. And then the last segment of the tour was at the rooftop of that building. Wayne Merrifield owns a cafe up there called the Perch Cafe. And Emma was out there with me talking about all the ways that Kelowna, the real life Kelowna, inspired the Club Penguin world building. So that was just a really neat tour that I had, and it concluded my visit to Kelowna so well. I remember reading that blog post, and it was like, wait, you went to the building? That's so cool. That's amazing. And here's the thing. When I read that post, I was like in university, and it just brought back memories of my dreams of wanting to go to Canada and see Club Penguin and to work for them. And it was just like... Reading your experience is really, really great because uh, I've seen a lot of other people sharing their experiences, but they're just like one tweet and a picture and probably some interactions with the staff who are active. But yours is like reading a full-blown experience. It's like we're there with you. Unlike the other tweets, it's just, hey guys, I went to the building. Here's the puffle bean bag. Ta-da! I'm so glad you think that way. Thanks. I Yeah, I want to take our fellow penguin pals on a journey. I know that not everybody can visit Kelowna. So I hope that the stories that I wrote on that blog would suffice. And I just, I took a lot of random pictures too. Not like, okay, here's the thing. I did not take a tour of the Club Penguin headquarters because at the last minute, they could not get me in that day, even though we already scheduled it for that day. So there was no way I could go inside the Club Penguin HQ. So I made the most of my time in Kelowna by taking pictures of the city and just and the other places where I happened to visit. I, I hope that could provide a different perspective on Kelowna and the Club Penguin experience. Out of curiosity, when you were young, did you ever thought of, like, had dreams, in fact, of wanting to work for Club Penguin? I did. I didn't know what 
I would do, but I wanted to work at the Club Penguin headquarters. I was planning, like, should I move to Kelowna or should I move somewhere nearby the U.S. border? And I just had all, and I looked on Google Maps. I saw where the Club Penguin headquarters was, like, just east of downtown. I'm like, okay, I could work here. But, but it was just, like, such a privilege just getting to visit Kelowna as an avid Club Penguin player. Do you think your tour visiting Kelowna was club like was like a club penguin tour itself, or was it more of an experience on how Club Penguin was born, or how what how Kelowna influenced the game as, or the tech industry in Canada? I'd say it's more of the latter. I got a full picture as to what Club Penguin's birth town was like. I also visited other Canadian, bigger Canadian cities in Western Canada, and I was able to compare those cities with Kelowna. Kelowna is a pretty small town compared to Vancouver and Calgary. It's just the Kelowna vibes are so entrepreneurial and so technological that there's this one part of town where there's all of these office buildings and trendy stores. And then there's other parts of the town that are more suburban, where the uh, typical office worker would go home and sleep, and then they would drive into the downtown Kelowna area for work. It's, it's that kind of vibe. But I also got the sense of the communal spirit going on because Kelowna is a small town. I, I could feel those community vibes translated into Club Penguin. So when I went around and I met the former Club Penguin staff, I almost felt like I was in the game. Like I was in a real life version of Club Penguin because I turned around the corner and, oh, you know, I, I know you from Club Penguin. It, it's like everybody knows everybody. That's the, that's what I felt while I visited Kelowna. That's really cool. Like, you you want to experience the your time in Canada, not just because of the game. You want to see what it's like beyond the game. Like, I remember when I went to Iceland. I want to visit Iceland for the sake of seeing Iceland, but part of it as well as because I like this kid show that was made there. And it was like, I want to see what the, what the countries like that made that show and I got to see some stuff that kind of inspired the show and I got to see and I just got to see it with a bigger lens other than oh it's just a kid show and it's like you and Canada it's like I want to see Club Penguin than just the game I want to see Hyper Hippo than just the gaming company I want to see what I want to see the whole caboodle so to speak you know yeah I mean that's part of the traveler mindset that's seeing the place as it is instead of just seeing one attraction and then moving on. Although I wish that I could have visited the Club Penguin headquarters and saw the theater and the puffle bean bags and all those iconic scenes, I did get a different perspective about Club Penguin and Kelowna from that trip. I mean, to be completely honest, your blog is filled with different perspectives. Like You decided to go for the opinion piece type deal for a Club Penguin blog rather than just, hey fam, new event. Here's how to meet Captain Rockhopper. New pin is in this location. So the fact that you got a different experience not only just reflects how you're going to write your piece, but it also reflects on, in my opinion at least, what who you are and how you write your blogs and stuff because you want to give things in a different angle. You want to show a different perspective and not just do something that's really similar to just, hey fam, this happened. That's all. The end. No, you want to give us the full experience <laughs> and stuff like that. Yeah, that's, that's so important with writing, actually, having a unique angle. Because so many people visit Paris, right? But we still read stories about Paris because people have different angles on the same city. And in this case, quite a few people from all over the world have visited Kelowna to visit the Club Penguin headquarters. I was glad that I was able to learn more about Canadian culture and food and the Kelowna city scene because I don't know if I'm ever going to be back in Kelowna again. So I'd like to have that fuller picture of the culture and the lifestyle and such. So as you may know, 
a lot of the Club Penguin community members moved to box critters. So when it's from, we went from penguins to hamsters, basically. And there has been a rise of box critters bloggers. There are a few that I know of. If, if you could pass down your wisdom to these bloggers, what would it be? I'd say experiment. Experiment with content, see what interests you, and just write about that. Don't You don't have to worry about following the crowd and having to write news pieces all the time. Whenever I visit a box critters blog, I go for the news. And then once I know that blog is reputable and has the news that I need, I'm just going to stick to that blog. I'm not going to visit other box critters blogs unless you have a unique unique content, a unique angle, unique niche, because, well, I already have this blog where I read the news. Why do I have to go to another blog to read the news? So, yeah, just experiment with whatever interests you. Are you interested in writing opinion pieces or fictitious stories? Just do whatever interests you and you'll find the audience out there. And do you have like any final words you would like to say to probably a lot of Club Penguin listeners who are here to see your reveal probably and probably get some insight from a Club Penguin blogger? I wanted to thank all the people, the fans and the Club Penguin staff that I've gotten to know the past almost 11 years. Thank you for making this such a thrill ride for me. It was a privilege getting to know you, play games, hang out, join parties. I felt kind of lonely. So I was glad that I had the Club Penguin community to play with and talk to. Also, I wanted to say that we've reached the climax of this thrill ride because with my little revelation that I am a girl and not a boy. I understand that that can come as a shock considering, okay, everybody has known me as a dude and my name, Tech 70, implies that I'm a boy as well as my clothes. I would appreciate your open-mindedness about that and I hope that you will still accept me as your friend even though now you know me as a girl. And finally, I wanted to say that wherever the community goes. Okay, so Club Penguin isn't around anymore. Club Penguin Island isn't around anymore. Right now we have Boss Critters and a few other games that Rocket Snail is currently planning behind the scenes. My visit to Kelowna made me see that despite what game is open or closed, We are still a part of this community, even though the material, the game is actually not here because we've made friendships. We learned so many things about ourselves through the experiences that we shared in the past, and they still resonate in the present. I felt that way when I was in Kelowna because the OG Club Penguin game ended, but I could still feel that community spirit lingering around the city through the people I met. So I wouldn't say the community is over or anything. I would say that the community has transitioned with the times. Before and after recording the podcast, Megan and I discussed about her identity and tried to talk about what would make her more comfortable. As one of the things she mentioned was she didn't want to be judged by her gender. Just after the podcast, she asked me this question. I'm curious, though, because, you know, everybody knows me as a boy, and I trust your opinion, and I appreciate your open-mindedness about this. What, like, I, I'm i not, like, a typical girl on a Club Penguin, right? I don't, I don't wear the girly clothes. I, I care so much about getting all the stamps and being a hardcore player and all that stuff, and, um, my my gaming skills are pretty good, like as you've seen in Epic Snail. So what do you think about that? Just knowing that a girl is actually is actually really good at like gaming skills. Why would that be a problem? It shouldn't be. Like I if just saying 
based on seeing what's that's going on in Club Penguin Rewritten, being known as the one with all the stamps is a good thing. And the fact that it's a girl, you're just you know, you're you're now being you're you're showing how cool and awesome you are, you know? It's not like you're Try, you're not, it's not like you're gonna one up them or anything. You're just showing, hey, I can play the game too. I don't want to be defined by my gender. Please accept me and all that. You're trying to be like, I want to be me. Yeah, people might have mistaken you for a guy, and I apologize for that as well. But let's be real, we none of us really know that. We didn't know until like now. But it shouldn't be like a huge problem. Like, girls and girls in video games are now like. It, it's not a problem anymore. I mean, yeah, it's rare to find girls and there are like underlying issues, especially with like games like Valorant and like, you know, Overwatch and stuff. But this is Club Penguin. Why would people hate you for complete getting all the stamps or being really good in the game? It's a kid's game. Why should your gender fear you or bar you from being good in the game? If you're good in the game, you're good in the game. Your gender shouldn't hinder you. And, and the people are like, upset that you're a girl and you can play these games then it's kind of sexist on their part because it just shows that it might show because i remember reading something that um there was a research done long ago guys who are good at games and see a female counterpart who's good at games they, re- they respect them they're like they see them as equals but guys who are really poor at video games and see a girl who is good at video games they get hostile they start you know throwing sexist remarks at them you know so it's more of like so part of it's like human nature where they might get mad, probably. But at the same time, that shouldn't happen. Like your gender and your ability shouldn't hinder you from being who you are, who who you want to be. That's my opinion, at least. Yeah, I just, yeah, thanks for that insight, too. I I wish I had more confidence at that at that time as early as possible to say that I was a girl and not a boy, but I fit into all the gender roles of a boy, right? I wear these clothes. My name is tech 70. I, I earned all the stamps. (laughs) Yeah. I, uh, well now the club payment community knows that I am a girl. Maggie alongside other girls and women, shouldn't be afraid to be themselves. Their works and effort shouldn't be looked down upon just because of gender. Maggie was able to prove that she knows how to play the game. She knows how to write a good story. That she has the skills to take her to places. Gender should not stop you from being skilled and talented. What I like about Maggie's blogs is that it's a different experience. It's not the usual samey post that you'd see online, but rather something different. And that's what I think all forms of writing, fictional or not, should be. Rather than screaming the same headline, try looking at things through a different lens. Who knows? You might find something interesting that nobody has covered yet. And that's what I'd like to do as a journalist myself. Find the angles that nobody has thought of. I'd like to thank Maggie Tran, aka Tech70, from joining this podcast. It is really brave of you to come along and to reveal yourself to us and share that vulnerability. My name is Ariel, and this has been Never Have I Ever. There are more topics and other missed out experience to cover, so until then, I would hope you stick around for the next time. While waiting, feel free to listen to an earlier episode of Never Have I Ever, or my other podcast, Casual Nerds with Matt, over on YouTube, Spotify, and other podcasting platforms. Thank you so much for listening, and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.